Hi guys, welcome back. Welcome. Oh, right, what are we doing today? Right, well, I'm gonna do a little bit of a, a beginner's thing, okay? Now, I know I've done the bits before. I've done lots of stuff on using the carbides and stuff for new turners and things, but I'm gonna do one that's a, bit, a little bit from a, a start situation, you know? For people that wanna use the carbide and they're starting and they're going out, I'll say you might, you might have the money, you might go out and buy a big lathe and all the tools and all the sharpening gear and do all that sort of stuff and that's that's fine, that's okay. Not everyone's able to do all that. Not everyone wants to start like that. A lot of people will buy it and I've, what I've done today, I'm on my little lathe, I've moved it round, okay, here so Lisa can be there on the camera. Because a lot of people starting out, if you're new, you have like a midi lathe and a lot of people say to me, oh yeah, well I've only got this lathe and what about doing it on that? Right, it's exactly the same, okay? The size of your lathe isn't important. It's that You'll move up to that sort of thing. New turning, you just want to go out and turn something, don't you? That's all you want to really do. So we're going to go through that and how we can do it safely. How we're going to do it um, and enjoy it, basically. Have a bit of fun. Now, I get so many people ask me, what should I buy? They come up, right, I'm new to turning. I've just got my lathe. Um, I want to do some carbide. I can't sharpen and thought of getting sharpening gear and all that. Um, what should I get? What should I get? And I always say, same thing, right, okay, standard type three chisel set. That'll do pretty much anything. So, we've got a standard type three, which you got your, you all know it, it's 14 mil square. And this is exactly what you'll get if you get them um, 12 mil round, okay, the detail. What else would I recommend? Right, I would recommend a nine, nine mil box hollower. The number one box hollower. That's all you're going to turn at this, this stage. Don't go looking to do massive things and all that. It's, it's, you're new to turning. You don't know exactly what you're doing. You're learning. All right, box all right. One other chisel I would say, SCH3, okay? That will give you all your finishes, so if you're getting any torn tor grain and that. Now this one, I've only got it, I haven't got, it will come in one a standard handle like this, okay? I haven't got one like that for me. I've only got it in, in here, okay? Believe it or not, out of all those tools, I haven't got <laughs> that in one of those handles. So we're gonna go through, that's, that's the basic tools. Now that, your turn there's nothing nothing at all you can't turn okay there's just one other tool you'd have to add and that would be a parting tool now you can go if you want to go and pay 120 quid for a carbide parting tool or whatever or go and get a flashy parting tool that's up to you standard parting tools like this are absolutely fine okay you just get but you you will have to sharpen it okay um that's fine that all it is you want a parting tool to part off you don't want to be rolling beads, you don't want to be skewing, you don't want to be doing that. You just want something to part off. Now, again, one of the cheap, easy things available, if you want to get one really cheap, old carving knife, okay? Um, this was like a bread knife, so it was serrated on the top, okay? You get, try and get a fairly stiff one, you know, a good strong one. Chop the blade off, put a point on the end, grind all the sharp edging off, Okay, if you can, get one that's got a continuous steel right down through the handle. It's good and strong. It makes a lovely parting tool. Just go and sharpen it up on your sander. If you've got an angle grinder, you can sharpen it on anything. But whatever you can do it safely on, okay? You need to sharpen it. Other than that, I mean, if you're wanting carbide ones, I make these ones from Sawblaze. Yes, I have them available. Just drop me an email and I can always add one of those on to an order. Okay, and the carbide one's fantastic because you don't need to sharpen them, they'll last forever. You're only parting off, it lasts you a long, 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 I can't even say, I haven't worn one out. That one up, the, that thin one I've got at the back there, I've had that, must be seven years now, so I ain't worn it out, so there you go. Right, okay, so that's that, that's what you're basically gonna want. So, right, you've got everything you wanna turn something, don't you? And what do you wanna turn? I have no idea why, but everyone seems to want to. I bought a layer, I wanna go and turn a bowl. <laughs> right, so you bought yourself a piece of wood, and I've just got, this is what you'd buy out of the shops. This is, I don't know what it is, it's beachy, whatever. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. The wood brand is up to you, what you buy. Right, hopefully you're not gonna buy something that's gonna max out your lathe. Okay, you're new to turning. Don't, don't put yourself in that position. Start easy, this is, six and a half six and three quarter inches in diameter okay plenty big enough the lathe can turn 12 inches so i'm going roughly around half of what the lathe's going to do okay we want to turn something nice and the main thing is we want to have fun we want to enjoy it right the other thing i would say 
get a chuck. Okay, now for this sort of size lathe, and even for bigger lathes, I mean, 40, 49 pound, I think these are, the SC2. Okay, from Record Power, that's how it comes. I'm in no way connected to Record Power, okay, so this is not an advert for them. It's just a good, affordable chuck that will serve you well, okay? And not just for this when you go, if you turn to decide to be a professional turner, I mean, you, you could become one of them in six months if you want, <laughs> just, just like a check a trade for wood turners. You can be an RPT, whatever. This chuck will still serve you well, okay? This will last you a long, long time and will come in handy. But this will handle anything you're going to turn on a lathe of this size, okay? And and it can can do do more than that. So I'm taking. You're going to get a chuck. If you buy a chuck, you're going to get a worm screw. Okay. Just you get loads of them, so you can just throw them on the floor. <laughs> if you've got too many. Be back with you in two seconds, guys. A little bit of tidying up. Right. Okay. So you're going to get a worm screw. That's brilliant. That now gives you an option for for getting these things on. I don't like face plates, a lot of mucking about. You ain't got to worry about that at the moment. Right, you will, with your lathe, get some sort of drive. It might be a four prong one like this, okay? Which means you can turn between centers. So fantastic, we can we can get started, okay? Yes, you can turn bold without a chuck, but you're new to turning. That's something experienced, Pete. You've got to have a bit of experience to know what you're doing. It's not something I would advise for new people. Make life easy for yourselves. If you're gonna buy a center, I would buy a step center, okay? One of these, as a retractable point, okay? The point can go in like that. These give a good bit of grip, but they will enable it to spin. If you get a catch, it allows the wood to, to spin, okay? So you're not gonna be jammed up. It's not gonna be biting you. It's not gonna be fighting back at you. Four prongs, they can tend to be a bit. If you don't want the piece to spin at all, then a four prong, is what you would have okay because that will bite into that we're going to use that because that is what you will probably get with your i've taken my i you know i have my my center here i've taken that off because that's not what you're probably going to have when you start so what i'm going to do that's what comes with the lace so i'm going to stick that in okay and we're going to start off with that that means now i've got to find my knockout bath somewhere because i don't think that i'll be able to you don't use it <laughs> <laughs> i don't tend to use them right okay so now we've got a bowl we want to turn it so we, got, we can put it between centers, okay? Or we can mount it on a worm screw. If you've got a worm screw, okay? Now, I'm gonna go on the side that you've got a worm screw. You can, you've bought a chuck. If you buy the chuck, you will get a worm screw with it. And you've got your centers. Right, if you've only got centers, then you're restricted. You're gonna have to put a tenon on, okay? On your bolt. Because you're not gonna be able to do a recess unless you can have this held. So now you've got to decide, what do you want a recess or do you want a tenon? You ain't going to know because you're new to turning, so you're not going to know the difference, are you? You're not going to know what's what's what. So you need to learn to do both, though, because that's going to set you up in time. So what are you going to decide on? How are you going to decide? You don't know because you, you haven't turned. So, right, okay, easiest way, right. Heads, tenon, towels, recess. Towels. Recess. Right, so we've got to do didn't work, did it? Can we cut that again? <laughs> right, so we're going to do a recess. Right, so a recess means we've got to have this held. Now, if it was a tenon, I could mount it between centres. I can turn the shape and I can come in and I can put a tenon on the bottom, okay? And I can turn that round, then hold that into my chuck and do some work. So we've picked a recess. We want to do a recess because we don't want to have to take any foot off. We want to finish it, okay? So, right. Important thing we've got to do, find our centre. We want our centre. Easiest way is a, a little compass, okay? Um, just come here like this and put it to one edge, then put it over to an edge. Yep, put it over, put it over. Right, so we know that's going to be a centre, so we mark it. Right, we've got it marked. Now we need to drill a hole for our worm screw. And I, I like worm screws, okay? I don't use face plates. You can use face plates if you want. A lot of lathes will come with a face plate. If you're going to use a face plate, then you're going to have to centre your face plate on here, screw it on, then that will screw on to there. For me, I don't like them, okay? And I never use them. For me, I find this is a, a 
fantastic system. Right, so we've got our feet now. That's gonna go for the depth of my screw there, okay? That's all I'm gonna drill in. Doesn't really matter as long as you don't go through this because you're gonna hollow it. So we're gonna go right down to there. That's it, that's our, that's a six mil drill bit. 6.5 because we've got a, a whatever that is, bit, that, right? <laughs> right now, let me, yeah, I didn't bang that in too hard, so we can take that out. Right, so we can pop our chuck on. Okay, we give it a little flick like that, hold it on nicely. Put our chuck in. Right, when we put our screw in, if you notice, we've got flats. Okay, we've got roundy bits and we've got flat bits when you when you put your your worm screw in. Okay, the flat bits go in line with the four bits of the jaw in there. Okay, so it goes in there. That will stop it from. See, if you don't and you put it in the other way, as you tighten it up, it will jump and then it will be loose. Okay, and you don't want that to happen when you're you'll know because if look, you can't turn it. Okay, and you go in. That's it. Now we're metal on metal. Don't over tighten your chuck, okay? Metal only gives so much. So tight and that little turn, that's it. It's in there. It's not going anywhere. Right, so now we're gonna put our blank on. And, and yes, you've all seen people put it on, turn the lathe on and hold it. You're new to turning. Don't even think about it, okay? This takes you literally a few seconds to put that on, that's on. Now, a bit of advice, that's tight, see? I'm gonna just lock my head and undo it. Undo it again. A few turns like that, okay? Now do it up again. Right, we're up to the jaws and all we do is, that's it. Don't wrench it, wrench it, wrench it. It's not going nowhere, that is it, that's fine. That's on, okay? If you've got a round blank, we've found center, so everything's gonna be nice and running fairly true. So we should be good at that. Now, we've got our towel stock, so we're gonna bring our towel stock up. I've just got a point center in here. Again, you can get step centers, you can get whatever you want. For me, I'm gonna start with a point because I'm gonna be putting a recess in, so I know I'm gonna take this bit away, okay? So it's not gonna matter if this marks it. So I'm gonna lock that down, and I'm gonna screw this in. Now, my point's gone in. This can't go nowhere. Doesn't matter what I do, this is not coming off, it's not going anywhere. Our screw is in, everything's in, safe. We must make sure this is safe, that this cannot come off, okay? Doesn't matter if your, your lathe's rocking and bouncing, but as long as this cannot come off, that's all that matters. Right, now we're gonna start to turn. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be using the carbide, so we're gonna rough this down at first, we're gonna use a square. Now what I recommend is a lot of people will come in and go straight in on the side here. I don't recommend that, because this is a bowl, and what can happen is you can get a, a grab and a catch, and it will try and pull you down. Um, and you can also chunk bits off. If there was any sort of like, where you've got the grain goes across here, you can always catch a bit here and it'll try and chunk. I've had it before where this whole piece will just, fly off you know so you don't want that to happen so i would recommend you turn this around and you go in at the side here okay and we're gonna start shaping this from this end right now main important thing right i've got my chisel that is set just i'm a fraction literally i'm a Probably a couple of mil, maybe a little bit too much, maybe about three mil. Now, you want your cutting edge, the actual cutting edge to be on centre. Now, you can line that up with the point here, okay? And you want that to actually, let's do it. Let's, let's, just, let's just do this, okay? So, if we're on here, and I put my tool flat on that tool rest. Now, you can see I am above by a little bit. Above or dead on centre, is perfect never ever below you will not need any reasons to be going below center you're not doing no special cuts or anything like that okay so don't do it ideally i recommend a couple of mil above that way you'll keep the tool slightly that way 
it, it will work better, okay? It'll be, it'll be a bit kinder to you, let's say. But never ever do you want your cutting edge below center. You'll, you'll find a time when that's right that you might want to do those sort of special cuts and things like that, but you don't want to do that when you're starting out. So everything's locked up, we're all tight, we're all in there, we're okay. Now what we wanna do, our tool rest is not in the way, it's not touching nothing. We wanna check, I've got my speed turned right down. I'm gonna turn the lathe on and see what's gonna happen, okay? Right, now I've got this on its fastest belt speed, I always do. So that's the slowest it will go at the moment. I, that, I can't tell you what it is. My readout doesn't work, it packed up within no time of me getting low. So I never bothered to fix it. Now, I would say, hang on, let me see. It should tell me on here. Right, okay. I'm at around about 1300 RPM with this. Okay. I don't think I'm actually as fast as that. I think that's a bit slower than that, but anyway. Right, so I'm going to start, I'm going to turn the speed up a little bit. Now, this is all in balance, so I can get this up a bit. Now, I'm not, I've got no readout. I can estimate that to be at around about 2,000 RPM, okay? And that is fine with carbide. Now, nothing is wobbling, nothing is shaking. That cannot come off. It's between those centers. We haven't got any bark. We've got no loose bits that are going to fly off everything is stable with that you have to consider what you're turning okay if you're new to turning don't go putting out of shape pieces on you've got to learn first okay so we're going to start with that that's turning right face shield this is the next thing put your face shield on don't turn without one if you ain't got one wait until you get one okay don't turn without it now all we're going to do, we're going to come in real nice and gentle. We're not going to grab on, we're not holding on, we're not going there, we're just going to nice and gentle, nice light cut, okay? And what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit less, we're going to take some nice light cut, and I'm going to go straight away across the top. Right, and I've gone straight over. Now everything is lovely and smooth, okay? We've got our nice finish on there, okay? Right, so now we're just gonna bring some of this down. It's a little bit bigger than what we want it to be. So we're just gonna do a few little steps. Right, it's just turning a little bit. I'm just gonna, actually it's not, it's slowing the lathe down a bit, sorry. <laughs> there we go, I've got it on the high belt speed. All I'm going to do, I'm going to get a little bit of this shaped off. And I'm pushing in now. I'm just taking a little bit of this off the bottom, just cleaning it up here. I'm just following the shape that I want to get. Right, don't worry about this at the moment, the ridges, that's because we've got a square, a square cutter. We're just getting a little bit of a shape, okay? But the important thing is how I'm holding the chisel. I'm just light, like this, okay? Now I can feel if it starts to get grabby, I'll feel it straight away and I can back it off. I can do so. If you're like this, you can't feel it, okay? Right, we've got a little bit of shape there, so we're okay, we've, we've done that. We ain't got no real out of sight. The square one, as I said, is better. I use it more on spindle than I would on bowl. I find it round a bit better on bowl. Right, now, everyone will say, I'm gonna do it because everyone moans about moving your tool rest with the lathe going. Right, we've got a bit of tear out here because we've just pushed in. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna move our tool rest around now because now we wanna bring around a little bit of shape on this bar, and we're gonna use the round chisel, okay? And we're just using these flat at the moment. There's no need to worry about moving it in. Nothing's touching. So we've turned our lathe back on. Right, now I'm gonna use the round chisel, okay? And again, I'm just gonna use it flat at the moment. I'm just gonna come in here, and I'm gonna move round.
Now at this point, you want to start getting a picture in your head of what you want. Because it don't matter about, don't worry about birds and this and that and different stuff. Just get a picture in your head of what you want this to look like. And then you make that shape, okay? So we're coming along here, we're going to have this flat and we're going to come here. And then I think what I want to do, I want to sort of go in a little bit. And all I'm doing is I'm just gently, very gently, I'm holding the chisel nice and light so I can feel everything. If it gets a little bit grabby, I can just back it off really easy. Well, I'm getting this sort of picture in my mind of a bowl. I don't know why. Must have had a, a trauma in my childhood or something. <laughs> but anyway, we're going for this sort of uh, a shape, okay? You do whatever shape you want to do. And all I'm doing, I'm just moving it around. Look, we're getting nice little shavings coming off. And yes, we are just scraping at the moment. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it at all. Right, we're going for that sort of shape, okay? It's what I've decided I'm going to do. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether you like it, whether someone else likes it. It's, well, it matters. if you're turning it, it doesn't matter to me whether you like it or someone else likes it. It's whether I like it, okay? I don't really like it, but anyway, it's what I've done. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, it's a bit like a, a cereal bowl, sort of. Yeah. Right, so we've come round. Now, we have, all we've done is, is scrape it, okay? We ain't touched the bottom yet, we're waiting on that. Right, I'm going to stop it, we're going to have a look. Right, now, actually, we ain't got a bad fish, but we've got a bit of tear out here, okay? Nothing that wouldn't sand, but we've got little bits here and little bits here. Now, what I recommend with this is we get our tool rest nice and close, okay? We keep our tool rest exactly where it is, we're, we're slightly above. I'm gonna bring it down to so it's actually dead on center. So I've moved it down a fraction. So I am, I'm, I'm gonna be cutting pretty much right on center now, okay? And all we're gonna do, we're gonna clean this, we're gonna get a bit cleaner finish on this, okay? Right, so. All we're gonna do, we're gonna come in now. We've been doing this, we've been going flat like this, okay? And all we're really doing is, is giving a scrape. So now what we're gonna do is we're just going, and this is very easy to do and very safe. Watch, we're gonna lower our handle a bit. We're gonna turn our chisel here and we're just gonna come in here and we're gonna make it exactly the same cut, okay? We just follow around and that's all we're gonna do. If you see these little tool marks here, just go back for it, just bring it across. There we go. There's on. Come up to here, and we're just gonna follow our shape. Right, and that's gonna improve our finish. Now, we should hopefully not have, there are, look, the tear out's gone. Got a few little tool marks there. We're just bouncing a little bit, but you can get rid of that, but that's more advanced. That's when you start lowering your tool rest. We're not worrying about that at the moment. We just want to get you this, this finish. So we ain't got no, those tool marks will come out so quickly. You don't want to get torn grain because you'll be sanding that forever, okay? But this is another point where if you've got your SCH free, okay? This chisel can come into play. 
and we just put it flat on the bar here and all we do is the same thing we just fall around nice and gentle just follow our shape come around here just follow the shape there we go now look we've taken some beautiful fine shavings off you can get a now look at the finish look we've got no tool marks we're actually virtually shining on our finish okay that's that's with having our sch free chisel that's what that will do now when we're cutting we cut from the smallest bit to the wider bit because the grains going across so when you cut here the the longer grains are supporting the shorter ones so as you cut here they're all supporting so they're not going to go start folding away if you go this way you'll lift the grain and you'll get a rougher finish now that is a beautiful finish there so we've got that right that bit's done okay we've done our outside that's that's what we wanted to do it's not the best of shape but it's a shape that i've done so i'm going to be happy with that okay you're new to turning it don't matter all that will come later on for you right now we want to put our our recess in the bottom so we can now we've reduced the weight of it quite a bit and we've got to put our recess in the bottom now because we flipped the coin and it said a recess <laughs> if we was going to do a tenon we could keep that in place okay and we could come in now with our square chisel and we can we can push in on the bottom or whatever we can do. see i'll right let's do let's do both let's pretend it went the other way let's do both okay so right i'm going to leave that in place for the minute now again i don't want to be pushing straight in with it my square so what i'm going to do i'm going to come in with my square chisel and i'm just going to come in at the side here like this little bit little bit Okay, we're holding nice and gentle here. Look, we're just, I'm gonna go, I've done a little bit left-handed, I'm gonna do a little bit right-handed for people that are right-handed. Okay, I'm just coming in, like so. And I'm just taking it away, like this. Okay, we've got a nice square bottom here. I don't wanna be pushing straight in, because I could lift that grain off, okay? So I'm coming in right now. Before I go any further, I wanna know what size I want. Okay, so I'm going to stop this. Now, if we was just between centres, I, I can keep going until I get to the size. Okay, now we've got our our chucks on there, and what I've got, fortunately, I've got another set of drawers here. Okay, so what I'm going to do? Uh, where are we? Here. I'm going to do two ways here. So. I'm going to set these up for my jaws. That's them fully closed. So all I'm going to do is go slightly... Um, basically, if you take a measurement to the outside of them, if they're fully closed, take a measurement to the outside of the chuck. Then when you open them up, okay, that will give you a good fit over the, over the mortise if you take that outside. Okay, so we've done that. We've gone for that. So we are literally just under there okay so now the way i will i'll leave that set for a minute that's set for the outside now if i'm keeping it between centers here like this then i will need a set of these okay and what i will do i'll just transfer that size that size okay so i've got two calipers okay if you haven't got these there's loads of ways you can you can make uh you can have a piece of wood and you can cut a slot in it so you know that's the size for your for what you want because all your tenons can be the same size for that chuck okay so now if that's the one i'm using 
Right, I know I've got to come down a little bit more. Right, now, let me see. Now, if you're not confident, just stop your lathe, okay? But that doesn't fit, so... Keep it nice and clean. Right, that just fits over, okay? So now we've got it. So now we want to put the dovetail bit on it. So all we have to do, turn our chisel, and just come in slightly, like this. Just put the point on, and come in. That's it. That has put enough of a dovetail on that, okay? Put that little slant. Go a little bit, it's just, look, tip on. Oh, don't get a skip. Tip on. Rotate it. Oh, I'm getting a skip. Sorry. That's my fault. Hang on. Well, it wouldn't be anyone else's, would it? I'm the only one doing it. Let's face it. Right, so, tip on and just come in with it like this. Nice and gentle. Everything's got to be slow and gentle. Right, now we've got a tenon there. Now we've got our tenon. So now we could turn that around, put that straight into our chuck, and that would be for our for our tenon and we've mounted it like that. But we chose we was gonna do a mortise. So we're gonna take this away. We're on a worm screw, we're not going nowhere, okay? We're gonna take our center out because we don't want to stab our elbow with it. And now we're gonna move this round to the bottom. Okay. I'm going to have to take that off and we're going to pretend we didn't have that. Now you can see I am a little bit above centre there. I'm going to make, take the tail stop off because it's, it's, it's right in my way, okay? So I'm taking my tail stop off, get out of the way. Hope you're following all this. <laughs> it's, it's less complicated than it looks. Wood turning has got to be fun. So, you know, you've got to have fun with it. Right, I'm still just slightly above on that, so I'm going to just drop it down a little bit. Be careful if you put your chisel between your legs, like I just did. You do have some valuable things down there. Right, okay. I'm on, that. There, there we are, right. So, I'm going to take this bottom off now, because I don't want that on there, because we chose to do reefer. So I'm just, like, I'm using a tiny little, like a, an eighth of an inch of the cutter. Right, be very careful when it comes to the flat because it will want to grab. So it's just nice and gentle. Everything is gentle. We don't need to force anything. We're not in a rush. We've given ourselves enough time. Okay, that's it. Don't worry about that cleaning up. Easy one for that. You're new to turning. Don't try pushing the square cutter straight on. Get your round chisel, okay? And you can clean that up with the round chisel. Like so, right? We'll clean it up with that. Now, we've got our calipers set, and these are set at the outside diameter. Now, I know for that, for recess, I don't actually know, I'm thinking I know, I can't remember now. Let me know now, give me two seconds. <laughs> right, okay, so my recess, I want around 45 mil. Is that for the outside bit? Yeah, this is for the recess, okay. So I'm going to set these, uh, it's just like, it's slightly under 40, 40 mil it will go, but it's, Right, I'm just over four, I'm between 40, 40 and 45, okay? So about 42 and a half mil I've set this at. Right, so when you come in, you only put the left side on. Right, now we put it there. Right, now, when you go there, they don't actually match up. So we come out a little bit. There we go. No, there, that's it. Right, we're matching up, close enough, okay? I'm there, look. So now I've got my line. I hope you can see that on there. So that's my line. So that's what my jaws are gonna go into. Okay, so we're gonna have that as our, our recess. Right, now this is where I would say you'd use your parting tool. Okay, so 
because I've got it and I've said about it, we're just, I'm just going to use the, uh, the carving knife one, right? So I'm just going to push in here. That's all this is, is an old carving knife. And I'm going to give myself a couple of little cuts in. Give it a little wiggle. Just cleans it off inside. Right, let's just give ourselves enough room there. And then we're just going to use our round one to take this out. Nice and gentle. We can use the square, but like I said, if you come flat onto this face with a hole of the square, you're a new turner. It's going to grab you, but you're going to get a grab. You won't get a grab with the round one. Okay? So just come across with the round, nice and gentle like this. Right, so that's gone. Okay, we are taking that down. Now we're going to use our detail chisel. We're going to bring it right over to the side here and we are going to very, very gently go in here. And all we're doing is putting a little lip inside there, okay? Just for our jaws to go in, like that. Okay, and that is it. Now, if you want to put any lines or anything on the bottom, now's the time to do it, okay? So what we can do is we'll just do a little... And all we're doing is push it nice and slow. Give the chisel a chance to cut. Don't just push it. Nice and gentle like that. That way you won't get loads of bad tear out, okay? So, we're okay with that. Now, what we've got to make sure on is with this bottom bit, and I'll stop it for a second. What we've got to make sure on now, and it is, it is by chance, is that this outside edge, okay, is higher than this inside edge. Otherwise, it's going to rock. Now, you can make this foot any size you want, any shape you want. You can do what you want with it. I'm just going to leave it as it is for the moment, okay? This is my first ever bowl. I'm not going to over fuss about that. I just want to turn something that I can say, look what I've just done. Right, so... We're not going to work. All I'm going to do is take a couple of little cuts, but I'm going to be sloping slightly inwards so it sits on the outer rim so your bowl doesn't swivel when it goes on the table. Right, so I'm going to start up. And what I'm going to do, again, I'm just going to hold the chisel straight like this. I'm just going to rotate it like that, okay? My handle is slightly in front. You don't want to do any push cuts and riding bevels at this. You're good. This is your first ever time, okay? You're going to hold your chisel flat. You're going to turn it. Not quite 45, just under. And what we're going to do, we're just going to come in. And we're going to make a nice little cut. Just push to the centre. Let's just come off the edge. Okay? And you'll see we've got nice little shavings coming off. We're going to go for one more. Don't go too mad because you don't want to take away your, your recess, okay? So we're just going to come in, another one. And there you go, that's it. Right, now, because we've rolled it over, we've got a beautiful clean finish. Look, I mean, look, this finish is, is lovely. You'd think this had already been sanded, okay? Now, we come on to the next thing. I'm going to take the mask off a little bit. Sorry if this is going on for a while, guys, but you know, this is you've never turned a bowl in your life. Now, this, 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 guys, is why I say you wear one of these. Look at this, look at that dust. If I wasn't wearing this mask, where would that dust have gone? Okay. Well, I wouldn't be wanting dinner, would I? Because I'd be full up. So, there you go. <laughs> Think about it, guys. You don't want to breathe this stuff in, you really don't. Don't even know right. what this wood is. Now, we've got. Quite a nice finish in there. It's not bad. It's looking really good. So now we're going to have to sand. So I haven't got my dust extractor. It's over there. I don't want to pull it everything out. Okay, so um, I'll do a tiny bit of sanding. And what I've got, I'm going to do a little bit of hand sanding. Okay, I've got my vacuum here, so I should hold that while I do it. Right. Now we can do a little bit of hand sanding. Now, if you've got power sand, but you're new to turn, don't worry about power sand and all that sort of stuff. Now, the only thing is, when you do hand sanding, especially on bowls, you're going to be moving around, 
chances are you're going to get you might get a few lines and you'll go through your grits anyway we're going to start with a 180 grit because we've got a beautiful finish already we don't need to go any lower than that okay we're starting with 180 we could probably even go 240 but we'll start with 180 right now an ideal thing is the rotary sanders okay right if you've got the money you know i've got one here this is like the commercialized yeah so i'm hoping okay very good, very good. But you are looking at 60 odd quid to buy that. So if you, you know, you're new to turn in, if you, if you can afford it, go and buy one. You won't regret it, it's very nice. Yeah, lovely. If you ain't got that sort of money, I've got a video for it, okay? <laughs> I don't know why, oh, they all do that, so I'm just doing it. Right, make one. Literally, a couple of quid, guys, and you know, a couple of bearings, little earth, rare earth magnet, you buy loads of these, make one, and I think it gives you a little project to make. They work just as well, you know? Like I said, that costs you a couple of quid, that costs you 60 quid. So, 60 quid, when you look at that, for a lot of people. It's another you, truck. <laughs> after you've paid tax, national insurance, it's nearly a day's wages, isn't it? Mm. Day's wages for a sander? Really? Oh. Expensive stuff, guys. Right. So, we're going to do a little bit of sanding on this. Only, only a little bit. So, I'm going to turn my vacuum on. Right, I've got my. As I say, I don't want to move my dust extractor over from there. I don't normally have this lathe here, okay? Right, first thing, dust mask, back on. Face shield. Doesn't matter that we've got a vacuum on, you're still going to get bit. Right, right there we go. Right, Hoover's on. Start our lathe up. And we're just going to do a tiny little bit of sand in here. Got this one side up. I'm going to get Lisa to hold that for me. Just hold it there. Thank you, darling. There we go. And that's going to collect everything. Okay. Now, when you say, just keep your sandpaper moving. Keep it moving all the time, like this. Now you can spend as long as you want to spend sand in, get it, it's fine. I'm not going to have to take too long because we've got lovely cuts, we've got everything nice, okay. So we're going to come in here, like I said, we're starting on the 180 grit. And then from 180 we're going to 240. So you'll have to go and get another bit of paper. I just have to do that and mine has changed to 240 grit. <laughs> Right, we're going to go up to 320. I'll just do that, and mine's now 320. Don't ask me how it works, because I'm not going to tell you. Right, there we go. Let's stop that. Right, that's all that sand did. We've got a couple of little probably sanding marks we go a bit more use a rotary one whatever sand a little bit more but we've got a beautiful look that's actually shining that okay let me turn that hose off and Lisa now like I say guys you take as much time as you want to sand now you can put some sanding sealer on you can put some waxes on you can put some uh, of your sanding paste, your Yorkshire grits, whatever you want to do, now's the time you'll go over it all, okay? And you'll do that and you'll get your nice finish. Right, we've done all that. Right, now there we go, look, nice gloss, look at that shine, okay? I mean, I haven't, because it's just like, there, Natural. it's done. Natural. <laughs> right, okay, so now, oh, we're not going to take that, don't undo that, okay? Now, I was just going to show you that. <laughs> so you'll know, I'm just going to demonstrate it and show you, that's why I put my truck here. Don't undo that to take that off because you've got a worm screw in there. Because <laughs> I know some people do that. Some people I've do that. I've locked my headstock. Um, I lock mine like that, okay? If not, you put a spanner on there. Now, right, undo it. We've done our little tight and undo and then tightened up so nothing's over tight. We can get it off really easy. Right. There we go. So now we've got our nice little... A nice little bowl. I think that's all right. A shape, that's not all too right. bad. I quite like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've done that. Right, take your lock off. 
I'm okay on this lathe because it won't start up if I happen to do it wrong. Right, I'm gonna take my, my worm screw out, put that back there. Have a place where everything lives. And put, <laughs> always put it back into it. Right, now, we've got our recess. So I'm gonna close my jaws down. Now, when I do a recess, a recess basically, you've got a hole and we've got a slight taper in. That matches the taper of these jaws. These jaws, they taper, okay? I like that to be pretty much close to a, a, a perfect circle because that's like a tapered bearing, you know? It, it's in there, it can't come out because it's smaller this end than it is in there. So it cuts like you put your hand in a hole, clench a fist and you can't get your hand back out. Mm -hmm. It's that same thing. So that's what we're doing. If it's a, a, a tenon, it depends on what I'm turning. I have spoke about that on other videos. I don't always want it to be a perfect circle. Okay, so this, pretty much is near enough to a perfect circle. Okay, when your jaws are open about five to six mil, you know you've got pretty much a perfect circle. So we come until the jaws have just tightened. They've gone tight, okay, just there. Now I go quarter of a turn and that is all you need to do. Do not wrench it and wrench it and wrench it, okay? It will not do you any favors. Once that is tight, it's tight. If you keep tightening, you're just stretching the wood. You're pushing everything under, under tension, you know? And being that you've got this, although you've tightened that, when you turn it, centrifugal fugal forces will always want to push those jaws that, to their max, that little bit, you know? So don't over tighten things, there's no need to. It's on, okay. Right, so now we've got our bowl turned round. So now we're gonna hollow it, okay. So we're gonna put our tool rest up. Nice and close, okay? Nothing's hitting, make sure nothing's hitting it. Everything's nice, comfortable. We're gonna check it. We haven't moved our tool rest, but we're gonna check and we know, right, I am very f slightly above my center, okay? Now, this is awkward because it's got a hole in it, but an easy way to tell if you've got a flat front is if you put the tool on and you turn it, if it's on center, it will stay there. If it's not on center, it will want to move, okay? Now, I am very, very slightly above, but I'm going to stay with that because it's not important at this point, okay? That will actually mean that I will gently lower the tool when I come to the middle, which means it it just makes the cut a little bit softer, okay? So, right, face shield on, and we're going to hollow. Start up, let everything spin up. Nothing's going anywhere. We haven't changed our speed, our speed is all still the same, everything is good. There's no need to change it. Right, we're just gonna come in, we're gonna start here in the middle, we're gonna make some gentle cuts, we're gonna come in, and because we're turning, but we're gonna go to the outside in. Vibration there, that's just the wood, that's all it is. Just protesting a little bit about being cut, that's all. the frame that it's on that vibrates it's not so much the wood it's because it's built the way I've got it on a stand okay right now what I'm gonna do I'm starting to get a little bit of this dishing I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna do the same as I did before I'm gonna just rotate slightly handle slight very slightly in front by literally about five degrees and I'm just gonna come along on the front here I'm going to cover links with little shavings. You see a nice little shavings coming off. Okay, I'm going to take another one. There we go. Okay, we've got a nice, got a little, little bit of bump in it. Now, if you're going to feel, don't feel it over here. 
Because when there's a rough bit, it will grab your finger, it will pull it between the tool rest, no matter how close that is, it will fit your finger between that tool rest and that piece of wood, and it will burn. It will take you down to the bone, believe me. All right, so don't try it here. Touch it over here, because if you get a little, grab it and put your hand that way. Right, I can feel I've got a little bit of roughness still there. So, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to do another one. Now, I ain't got to go all the way in. I'm just, right, very tiny bit. It's just gone. It's gone to there now. So, I'm going to come in again. I only need to go to there, because I'm going to be taking all this bit away. Right, lovely and smooth, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is with it rolled over, I'm just going to brush that edge. Just brush it. Because what you've got is a very sharp edge if you don't. And it will cut you. Believe me, it's like a paper cut. The paper is made from wood. So there you go, from the trees. <laughs> right, bit of educational there. Right, okay, so that's nice. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use a pencil. And an easy way for you is to, if you look at the outside, work out roughly how thick you want your bowl. I would say for a first bowl, if you go for about that thickness, you're going to be all right, okay? So we've got to go there. That is adjustable. We're not fixed to anything. And now all we're going to do is hollow this out to that line. And we're going to start here. We're going to take one. Therapeutic. And you can watch it just go flowing away if you want. But if you want to, we can go over to our square chisel and we can just do a little bit of pushing in. Now as you push in, gently move it to the middle. Just let it, it will naturally want to go that way. Just gently move it. Like so. And it's a very quick way of hollowing. But at the same time, be very gentle. There's no need to ram things in, okay? But, at the same time, be firm. Don't be too gentle, be firm, okay? And all we're going to do is we're going to take this out to this line. Now at this stage, being new to turning, stop before the full flat of the cutter, before the full face of the cutter touches, because it will want to grab, okay? And you won't be expecting it, because you're new to turning. Right, that's it, we've done enough with the square, we've got all these little ridges, we're going to get rid of them now. So we just go back over to our round chisel and we're going to come in here and we're just going to follow it round it's nice on the flat take your time with it you want to go a little bit deeper okay I mean, I know how deep I'm, but we will do some measuring in a little bit, okay? But we've got plenty of room at the moment, we're nowhere near deep enough. As you can see, there's no grabbing, there's no snatching. It's just nice and gentle. Just follow the cut, just follow it in.
Right, we're going to stop there so I can have a little measure. Right, now we've got, I mean, you can see we've got a lovely finish on that anyway. Right, now we can tell when we fill, we've got even thickness down here. We're a little bit fatter here. You can feel with your fingers, you know, you can feel it. And we've got bit fits. We can't go much deeper because we've, remember we've got a mortise in the bottom, so we've already come in. So that isn't going to have to go much thinner than that. Now, all we have to do is if we get a tape measure, uh, our ruler, and we put it on here, okay? And we can say, right, we want, we're looking down at the top. So I've got 35 mil, okay? It's about the maximum I want to go. So now if I put that in there, now we can do this one or two. Easiest way is if we put the tool rest right up against the front. Just look along it to make sure it's, it's pretty much straight. Right there. Right, and now we can pop that in and we can see we've still got, well, it's saying near enough 10 mil. Can we cross that with 10 mil? Yeah, we've still got about 10 mil before we get to our maximum depth, okay? So that's good, because we want to leave enough room for doing our finish cut. Right, so we're going to start up. Go a little bit more. Right, so remember we're fairly okay here okay okay here but we we're a little bit thick on this point so we want to take more wood away from a little bit more from there so if we come in nice and gentle and then here just go a little bit firmer just take that little bit of wood away from there and continue every cut to the middle take every cut as far through if you don't want to go any deeper once you take this, just lighten off a little bit, but don't stop the cut. Don't leave any ridges or anything. Every cut, take it right through. So we come here, I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna come down. I don't need it off there, I want it off here. So now I'm gonna go in a little bit harder. Come around. I don't wanna take too much. I've still got room on the bottom. I just go a little bit softer again. And I'll take my cut right to the end, okay? So I'm getting this here, I'm getting this down. I can feel here, I'm okay. Got a little bit of meat here in this corner. You can do it, just, you can feel it. Let's say, I'm, I know I'm putting my hand there, I've got a lot of space here. It's just, I'm so used to it, because I've done it a long time, guys. But really, feel over this side is best. Because if it catches you, your hand just comes away, okay? Right, I can feel I've got a little bit more here. Right, still a little bit in this corner. Now, an easy way, we've got our pencil, okay? So we can feel, right, okay, I can feel I've got a bit of thickness there. So, I wanna take that bit away. I don't want any more away from here. And I'm getting close to it down there, okay? So I'm gonna take a bit more from here and then I'm going to come across and I'm going to take a little bit because I've been shallowing up so I've got a, a, enough to take some off that bottom. So we're going to come in, we're going to start our cut, always start your cut back from where you want to start, okay? So we come back here, we're going nice and gentle, and we're going to put a little bit more on, and we're going to follow it through. Maintain the same pressure. Right to the bottom. Right, now. Let's see. Yeah, we've got a slight bump just there. We can see it. We're going to take that out. Just keep following everyone right to the middle. Right, yes, our bump is more or less gone. We've got one tiny little bit there and that will all be gone and then we'll be nice. Right, so, again, you can see a shadow here. So, in this way, it's just put a little pencil mark. That's our bump there. We want to get rid of it. Right, that's it. Our bump's disappeared. But now we've got, because we've just taken the bump away, we've got to come in and clean that up. 
So we come from the top, we come in, even pressure. You get that little nipple, just come here, drop the handle, raise the handle, drop the cutter down and just come up and brush the centre and it will go. Right, I've got a little bump there. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to come down, I'm virtually not cutting, now I'm going to cut. There we go, right, let's have a look and see what we've got as a finish. Right, there we go, guys, that's not bad. Take that off. Right, just here on this end grain, because we're just pushing in, we've got a very, I'll put it around this side, you might see it, I don't know. It's not easy to see. This is all nice, everything's nice, no bumps. We've got a little bit here, a little bit of tear out just there. Okay, so this is where now we come in with our SCH free chisel. Okay. So we've got our SCH free. We don't have to do anything, it's already set. Lisa just has to move the camera a yeah. bit. It's already set at the angle for you. You don't have to do anything. You just use it flat. We come in, we will start our cut here and we will just follow it through in one sweep. Do not stop. One sweep, okay? And on this edge here, we're just gonna take one little clean up pass on that first. So we're gonna put our chisel there. And we're just going to be very gentle. That's it. We hardly took anything. That's polished it. Right, so we're going to come in here. Pick that cut up right on that edge there. Now, notice the handle is right over here. We can't do it here. Okay, handle's right over. Pick up our cut. Right, we can't see the middle because we've got all that stuff, so we just come back and we just take that off that middle. Right, we've got a, this will show up any bump. Now we've got a very slight little bump just there. You can't really notice it, but we're not going to leave it. So what we're going to do, we're not, we're happy here. This is all nice. We've just got a bump there. So all we do, we put our bevel this is our bevel flat, so we can't cut. We put our chisel on there. We come back and we fill. Now, I can feel it just drops down there. It just drops. There it is, right, right there. And that's nearly there. Back a little bit further. Just there, I feel it drop in. You feel it. If you come back with it, you'll feel it like it drops in, drops into a little rut. And then you go forward from that, okay? But don't try and start from here, because you'll just put another line and another line and another line. Come back, it drops in, and then push forward and you'll take it out. And that is it. And that will have finished our... That will have given us a nice clean finish. Now we've got no torn grain, okay? There's no torn grain whatsoever, okay? We've got all nice your toins as they call it okay a beautiful finish there right so now all we're going to do is a very quick sand again and we'll turn my vacuum on come over here Lisa's going to hold that for me she's my dust extractor <laughs> okay I'm going to start up again I'm going to take this back to 180 grit
Keep it moving all the time, don't stand in one place. So everything feels nice, keep it all going. Right, 240 grit. No need to overwork the paper, don't press it too hard, just let the paper do its job. 320 grit. We're just going up to 320, that's all we're doing. Right, there we go. That's all done, now we've got a nice clean finish there. Okay, what we got there? We've got a little thing, oh no, look, just there. We've got a little bit of tear there, look. Right on that side, you see it? Yeah, let's get rid right. of that. Now we're not having that. <laughs> now you could go on. It's very easy to just say, well, take another little go with the sandpaper. But no. We will not. We will not. It's a little bit, it's just that tiny little bit of tear, just there. So what we're going to do, I don't want to go all across the bottom of the bowl again. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to really gently bring that out like that. Let me have a look. Right, I've got a fraction more there and that will be gone. So I'm coming real gentle. Like so, that's it, that's going to be gone there. And then what I can do is just get my paper, because I came in so tight with it, get my paper, a little bit like that, and that's it, gone. And that tear out's gone now, it's all gone. Now we've put no finish on this, okay? Um, what I'm going to do, just because it's a... a Simple, quick finish. I know this has gone on for a little bit, guys, but there you go, never mind. What else you gonna do with your day? <laughs> right, let me get a little bit of um, applicator. Right, and all we're gonna do, we're gonna put a little bit of, um, we're just gonna put a little bit of oil on it, okay? A little bit of oil in there. That'll do it. Put a little bit, bit of board on your lathe. Yeah, look at the colours in that. Yeah. Right, and then again, we'll do the same. On the back here, I'm just going to do it quickly while it's on the lathe. And now, what we're going to do, because we've got it in our recess, so our bowl's already finished. We'll take it off our recess, like so. A little bit of oil around there. Oops, don't get the thing. Right. Wipe that surface oil off. Got a, bit of, a couple of little bits of fluff. And there we go, guys. There's our little bowl that I'm getting all fluff from the <laughs> bit of rag that I've just used. Right, and as you can see, we didn't do much on sanding, but we got, again, Beautiful finish off of our cardboard tools. Look at that. Okay. And that's not a wet wood, it's a nice, very, very sort of dry wood, as you can see how dusty it was. But there we go, guys, another nice little, little bowl. Okay. That's the shape I chose to do. Might not be to your liking, not, might not be to someone else's liking, but I'm happy with it. Okay. There we go. Another little bowl, just having a play with a carbide. But if that's your first ever turn in and that's your first bowl, be pleased, be happy with it. Something to be proud of. There you go. You've got a nice finish. You've got no tear out. You've got no torn grain. Okay? 
and that's just with our carbide chisels. Like I said, guys, if you want to go and buy traditional tools and go through the, the sharp, I mean, you've got to sharpen them when you buy them, you've got to sharpen them before you use them. Tools, unfortunately, when you buy tools from a shop, they're not sharp, they're dangerous tools, really, because you tend to, you'll push harder to get them in. Buster, get away from the sawdust. Go on, <laughs> go on, back it up. Um, so, yeah. That, that's it and if you want for the tools to get started to be able to go out and turn pretty much anything then that's that's my recommendation get asked all the time what would i recommend um that's what i would recommend to you we didn't use the box hollower one today we didn't need to the nine mil okay if you're doing some smaller stuff that comes in we're not worrying about pushing and push cuts and riding the bevel and floating it round. new to turning we're not going to do that you're not going to understand it okay but the standard type three set and those two chisels will allow you to do anything. And this chisel, the, the SCH3 will clean up. You saw that outside of the bowl, inside of the bowl. It gives you a finished cut. There is no tool in the world that will give you a finished cut like this one will. Okay, so there you go. And I mean, those chisels, if you're interested in buying them, they're on the website. Okay, you've got your standard type three set is £85. Uh, box hollower is £32 and the SCH3 is £35. So that works out at that cost. That cost. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, well, we've got 85 okay, Just and we've 32. got uh, 67 so 85 and 67 so you've got under, £152, is it? Something like that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you can work it out, guys. Yeah, so for out. literally under uh, 160 quid, you got all the chisels you need to do anything, and then just add yourself a parting tool. And in all honesty, you just want a quick parting tool. Free UK post. Yeah, and that's all free UK post. First class, uh, special delivery. Actually, I send them out. Yeah. But there you go. Now that oil's had a chance to settle in, so you can see it's not just because it's the wet oil. That oil's actually gone into that and actually really made that quite nice. Look at that. Yeah, I thought it was going to be a boring bit of wood, but. It's Look how that nice, looks. You see that? Yeah. You got all that grain? We've got some lovely, look, the light goes in it. It's all nice. There you go, guys. And that's the finish we get. Straight off of carbide tools, okay? Tiny bit of, so you see the sanding I've done, okay? Just a very quick little bit of sanding. And there you go, that's what we got. Right. Happy turning, guys. Get out there and give it a go. But remember, don't go sticking massive logs on. Don't go putting half a tree trunk on there because <laughs> you're going to hurt yourself, okay? Get yourself set up and do it. It's like, you know, you don't jump in a Ferrari and go tearing off around the M25 and then think, I'm going to have some lessons next week. <laughs> so think about it, guys. Right, anyway, there you go. Hope that's been of help. If not, then don't worry. Just skip and watch another video. And I will see you on the next one. Don't forget, tip, guys. guys, subscribe. And yeah, like, and, and it comment. would be nice if you could subscribe. I know a lot of because you can tell on the YouTube, a lot of people that do view are not actually subscribers. Um, just click the subscribe button, guys. You don't even have to stay with it, you know. All right, if you don't like it, then fine, that's understandable. Like they say, you can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time, you know. It's very hard to believe that someone wouldn't like to be watching me. <laughs> Be, might be one or two out there you never know but there you go guys anyway anyone need any help don't feel free to message message or say anything i'll always uh give you an answer or if i can't do it, i'll always put it on a another video on a video and just to take a note guys now because we were really really slow and gentle going in to do our lines with our detail no tear out whatsoever because we went real slow and gentle. Let the tool do its job. The tool will do the work, okay? And you'll get that. And you can see, we've actually, I don't really, really hardly touch the inside of that with anything. And that's the finish we got. So there you go. Right, happy turning, guys. Toodle pip, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.